Hello, everyone, and welcome back to today's episode of Alpha Tech. As we know, the first launch of Starship ended with a fireball, and its second launch also had the same result. So, how do SpaceX and Elon Musk guarantee Starship's third flight will be any different? What do they need to do to improve in Test Flight 3? Okay, let's jump in. Elon Musk is a person well known for his unique philosophy of developing rocket technology. Test the launch vehicle, blow it up, note what went wrong, fix what went wrong, repeat until you get something that flies as reliably as an airliner. Despite being someone who accepts failure, Elon Musk surely wouldn't want to witness his proud rocket explode for the third time. That's why he and SpaceX have made new strides in the Starship program, ensuring that the outcome of the third launch will be different. The first thing we have to talk about is the rocket's automatic communication system. On Starship's second flight, the communication system linking the rocket and SpaceX's central control room experienced an interruption. This issue might not have received much attention so far, but it plays a crucial role in the safety of Starship's flight or any other flight. It's an aspect that needs careful consideration. Imagine a spacecraft as a smart, independent explorer in space, equipped with a two-way communication system. It is a down channel for receiving information, telemetry from its sensors, and an up channel for receiving new instructions or program updates. It's like sending a message to your robot friend exploring a distant planet. However, the launch vehicles or rockets are more like one-way messengers. They only have a down channel for sending telemetry back to Earth. The instructions or program they follow are set in stone before they even leave the ground. Kind of like programming a robot before it embarks on a mission. So, while rockets can share their status with us, they don't get to receive new instructions on the fly like spacecraft do. If the communication link is severed, we lose vital information about the rocket's position, its intended maneuvers, and the potential risk of unintended explosions. It's like navigating blindly, and this situation could pose significant hazards to the overall safety of the area. A unique hiccup with Rocket Lab serves as a cautionary tale. They lost a rocket when the link between the rocket and the ground was severed, triggering an automatic abort that shut down the engines mid-flight. SpaceX also faced a parallel situation in their recent second launch. The second crucial aspect that Elon Musk and SpaceX will show us the difference from previous launches is in the stable operation of the 33 engines combined with the flow of fuel within the Super Heavy. In the original test, six engines failed. It didn't make its full burn, so it's evident that they've made significant progress in that aspect. And it's the most muscular part of the rocket that they appear to have completed on the vehicle's second flight. However, the issue here that likely revolves around the fuel coordination of the Starship Super Heavy as it separates from the initial stage and returns to Earth. It has to ignite a subset of engines to control the atmospheric reentry. And what probably happened is that almost all the fuel was exhausted. The rocket is, you know, 60 to 70 miles up in the sky. It's swinging back and forth, and there's not much propellant left in the tanks. And so, it turns out to really be a challenge to get the oxidizer and the methane propellant all the way into the bottom of the engine. Therefore, the natural propensity of fuel is actually to rise to the top of the vehicle. SpaceX will certainly implement some technical solutions to precisely regulate the fuel flow. The third difference is a new shirt of Starship. Yes, I mean the heat shield of Starship, which will be reinforced on the spacecraft using a different method. While the basic steps for attaching the initial heat shields may remain, SpaceX will introduce additional methods to check the strength and adhesion of the heat shield tiles. In both the first and second launches, many heat shield tiles were observed falling off during ascent. Perhaps they overlooked testing each tile individually with a suction cup to verify their adhesion, a step they typically took in previous tests. As a part of the FAA's requirements, SpaceX has to solve the problem of heat shield by finding a more reliable way to attach the tiles to the rocket. SpaceX has shown new signs of changing the method of installing heat shield tiles. It starts with the introduction of new pins to attach to the heat shield bricks. Of course, they still use a system of three clips for each tile, but instead of being spaced as far apart as previously, now those three clips move closer together. This hinted at the reduction of the brick size, which would significantly improve the heat shield tile strength, making them harder to crack. Perhaps SpaceX will apply this new design for the whole system on the vehicle, or they'll use a hybrid approach, given that just installing the smaller size tails in more challenging areas like near the flaps while the majority of the ship's area is unchanged. Besides that, the new heat tiles might be getting a metal insertion for an unknown reason. 
Some supposed that it looked like a secondary protective layer in addition to the star brick outside, within the context that if the heat shield falls out, at least the stainless steel skin's protected by that metal. One of the interesting and game-changing factors for SpaceX is the hot staging. It's undeniable that the hot staging on the booster of the second flight was a bit crazy, but immensely useful. It played a crucial role in successfully separating the two stages of Starship. However, there are opinions suggesting that the hot staging might not be efficient enough in heat dissipation, and the heat shield protecting the forward dome of the liquid methane tank may not be enduring enough, potentially failing to safeguard the fuel tank from any leaks. Therefore, the third launch is an opportunity for SpaceX to further refine this aspect, dispelling the doubts of some people who often criticize SpaceX's Starship program. What do you think is the most crucial factor for Starship's third flight that SpaceX and Elon Musk need to focus on? Are there any other areas that they need to improve that we haven't mentioned here? Please comment below to let us know. Anyway, they have all the data from both the first and upper stages of the rocket, so they will continue implementing all the lessons learned. SpaceX will fly Starship and fly consistently. The upcoming years will be a crucial journey for Starship, and everyone will be closely watching its development, especially government agencies like NASA. The recent two space flights of the spacecraft seem to have pleased NASA with these outcomes. They understand how SpaceX operates, and they certainly don't see these as failures. They see them as successful test flights. Because of this, NASA's official missions for SpaceX's Starship will be initiated with the early 2024 launch. For this launch, NASA has specifically mandated that Starship perform the process of storing and transferring cryogenic liquid fuel in orbit, known as the propellant transfer demonstration. This mission will provide NASA with a clear insight into the testing processes during SpaceX's technological development. Ultimately, to reach the moon, they still need one or more Starship tankers capable of safely storing fuel in orbit. Then, they can execute a fuel transfer process to other Starship vehicles. To carry out NASA's tasks or to achieve their own goals, Elon Musk and SpaceX have actively prepared for the launch within the Gateway to Mars. Starship 28 and Booster 10, the two main characters who will obviously participate in the third launch, are preparing to undergo the tests that any upcoming vehicle must complete. SpaceX posted on X, sharing three photos of the spacecraft involved, stating, Flight 3 vehicles are on the padded starbase for testing ahead of Starship's next launch. Elon Musk also shared in a tweet, Starship Super Heavy Booster to the launch pad. Besides, SpaceX is also swiftly reallocating areas for the support infrastructure of the Starship spacecraft. At the OTF, GSE-7, initially designed to soar CH-4 but repurposed as a water tank, is undergoing maintenance. Workers are removing paint from the welds around the lifting lug, likely to inspect the welds before discarding the tank. The tank farm expansion remains a focal point, displaying ongoing activity including plumbing, piping, and manifold enhancements. Particularly, the launch area's entrance is undergoing significant alterations, such as the complete removal of the container wall and the installation of horizontal tanks and pipelines. What was damaged in the second launch of Starship at the launch pad, such as the chopstick arms or ship QD and booster QD, is still being gradually perfected by SpaceX workers in terms of technique. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.